How's it going guys? My name is Dom and today we're going to be having a look at object iteration in JavaScript. Now, specifically, we're going to be having a look at three functions which you can call on objects and these functions are all going to return arrays that let you do useful things with the keys and values within an object. So let's get started by having a look at this object right here called person which is supposed to represent a person that comes from a database or something like that. We can see here, got a few properties such as ID, username, age, uh, hobbies, and an active state. So the first function to have a look at is called object.keys. Now, as the name suggests, this function allows you, or it's, it's going to give you an array of all of the keys within your object. So let's go down here and say const keys equal to uh, object, then say dot keys right here, then pass through the object which we're trying to call the function on. Now we can see here before having a look at the results, we can see here that this is this this function comes from the global object right here then you call the function on that as opposed to saying something like person dot as a method, this here is actually a function on the global object. So we can now say console.log, pass through keys, save this and go inside the browser and we get this right here. So like I said, it's an array of all of the keys within your object. Now, why does this exist and when would you use it? Now, to be honest, I can't think of any specific use cases for this function, but what I can tell you is that this function here, alongside the rest of them in this video, are going to come in handy when you are transforming data. I've used this countless times in the past when I'm working with some sort of external library or framework which provides an object in some sort of form, but the other API that I'm using or the other library that I'm using expects it in a different format. So what I'll find myself doing is using things like object.keys to then loop over the you know loop over the properties and then build something else that fits the other thing that I'm trying to use. Uh, alongside that, you've also got things like meta programming, which uh, this might be useful for, but it's definitely good knowledge to have this function here and the rest of them, uh, you know, in your arsenal so you can use it um, later on. So that is object.keys. You have a list of all of your properties. Now, one quick thing to mention before moving on is that, of course, since this here is an array, you can then do things like a for of loop to loop over each key and do something with it. So all of these are standard arrays, which you can, of course, use for loops on. The next function is called values. So let's change all of these uh, names here using uh, control or command D on your keyboard. You can select multiple uh, you know, selections here. I can now say values just like this. So now we have object.values and as the name suggests, much like the previous one, this one here is gonna return an array, but it's gonna be the values as opposed to the keys. I'll save this, go back in the browser here, and we get all of the values for the object. Now, similar to object.keys, you find yourself using this for data transformations and metaprogramming, but what I find with something like this in particular is when you are trying to build something such as a unique payload or string that represents one of your objects, you'll find that object.values might uh, come in handy there because every object that you call it on will produce a, a different value. So you can then hash that value potentially to once again create some uniqueness for your object. So things like that, um, you know, this function here might be useful for. Once again, it's an array so you can loop over it if you wish to. Now, I think the most prominent function to cover today is the last one. That's going to be object.entries. So once again, I'm going to uh, use control D here to say uh, object.entries right here. 
I'll save this and go inside the browser straight away just so we can see what actually happens. And what you'll find here is we actually get a two-dimensional array. So we have here an array of arrays. And if I expand this, it comes more clear. We can see here that for every item inside the parent array or the main array, we have a nested array of two values, the key and the value. So in other words, you're taking all the data within your object, so both the keys and the values, and you're converting it into a 2D array. We can see here, um, if I was to uh, try and get entries at index three, it's gonna give us the fourth uh, key value pair in my object, so the first value being the uh, property, the second value within the array is going to now be the actual value of that property, okay? So this here is probably the most useful out of the three, and I'm going to uh, show you why. So let's go back inside VS Code here, and I want to show you a traditional example of looping over an object. So let's remove this console log and now instead say for, just like this, then say const key in, then we can say person just like this. You would then say, if person dot has own property, then pass through here the key, you would then be safe to uh, do whatever you want with the particular key. So I might say console.log and I'll say person at this particular key to print out the value. So if I was to save this, go back in the browser here, it's gonna print out each value within the object. So this here, using this has own property is gonna guarantee that the property actually belongs to the object in which you are calling it on and doesn't exist up the prototype chain. So that is what that does. And this has been around for quite some time, obviously not over the last few years as much, but especially, um, you know, if we're talking uh, 2016 and earlier, I would say, um, you know, things like this have definitely been around everywhere. So this is your traditional example. Now, what you can get away with or an alternative, a modern alternative would be to use the entries function. So let's instead say for, and then take advantage of array destructuring here to say for const key value of object.entries, then pass through person. Now I might just replace this here with entries itself as it's already declared just above. So what's happening here is firstly, the object.entries function only returns the properties which belong to that object. So that right there is going to eliminate the need for object.has own property. Okay, that's the first thing. Second thing is because this returns a 2D array like I just showed you earlier, um, we can utilize array destructuring here to essentially take um, the first and second value within each entry so being the key and the value, and then assigning that to the two constants right there. I won't go into array de uh, destructuring too much in this video, um, but that's what's happening, which means you can now say something like console.log key, then console.log value to log out both the key and the value for your particular key value pair. I'll save this, go back in the browser here, and we can see here we get ID, then 252, username, decode, age 32, and so on. So we are basically printing out the property name and then the value for that property. And that is all done using object.entries. So this is probably a common use case for, of course, the entries function, but you've also got something else which I find myself using quite a bit, and that is to build a query string from an object. So you may have seen URL search params in JavaScript before. If you haven't, this here is a useful object, so you can build query strings that also includes um, things like URL escaping, so your percent %20s and things like that. It does all that for you automatically, and it requires, in a lot of cases, object.entries to build an object or build a query string um, with simplicity. So let me show you this right now. To build a query string from the person object, you would say something like const search params equal to uh, new URL search params, and then within here, 
you want to pass in your 2D array because we can see the constructor for URL search params expects a string 2D array, which is exactly what object.entries is going to give you a lot of the time. Now, when it won't give you that is when you have things like your um, your arrays here, which of course isn't a string. It's going to probably try and convert it to a string, um, but of course, if it's you know if it's not a string, then it's not going to work properly. So I might just remove that one. I forgot to think about that actually. So we now have simple values, which means a string conversion is going to be perfectly fine for these ones. So let's go back in here. I'm going to say entries as part of that constructor. So passing in the 2D array. I can now say console.log search params dot two string. I'll save this, go back in the browser here. And we can see here we get a query string that has been escaped. And it's also been combined with the and and the equals, etc for the key and the value for each object, sorry, each property within our object there. So uh, definitely comes in handy when using URL search params if you provide it with object.entries. So that is all for this video, guys. Hope you enjoyed that one and you learned something. If you did, make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next video.